This is Wednesday, November 25, 2020. And tonight we are praying an order of worship for the evening, observing James Otis Sargent Huntington, monastic and priest. We begin on page 109 in the Book of Common Prayer. And let's take a few moments to quiet our hearts and our minds. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmist writes, If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turned to night, darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. page 110. The prayers for light. And normally we would pray just one of those prayers, but we're going to pray all three this evening. The second one, I'll ask you to join with me. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the Vesper light. And we implore you of your great mercy that as you enfold us with the radiance of this light, so you would shine into our hearts the brightness of your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And please pray with me. Grant us, Lord, the lamp of charity, which never fails, that it may burn in us and shed its light on those around us and that by its brightness we may have a vision of that holy city, where dwells the true and never failing light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord God Almighty, as you have taught us to call the evening, the morning, and the noonday one day, and have made the sun to know it's going down, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that by your brightness we may know you to be the true God and eternal light, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Turning to page 112, let's pray together the hymn, O Gracious Light. 
O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 38, beginning on page 636 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will pray the psalm together in unison. <clears throat> That's Psalm 38, beginning on page 636. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life? and desires long life to enjoy prosperity. Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. They said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away, for I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And turning to page 120, let us pray together the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, as announced, today is the observance and commemoration of James Otis Sargent Huntington, who was born in Boston in 1854, 100 years before me. That's not bad. Um, and what amazes me when I look at this Huntington, I keep going, why is that name so familiar to me? Well, part of it is because there's Huntington Avenue in Boston, and it's actually where the Western Hotel Copley Place is, where I worked for like 10 years. So I should know the name Huntington. But he's quite the character. He studied at Harvard University and then St. Andrew's Divinity School in Syracuse, New York, and was ordained to the priesthood around 1880 and served a working class congregation. And after a few years, he felt called to found a monastic order for priests of the Episcopal Church. And with two companions, he began working among poor immigrants on New York's Lower East Side. After a very slow start, he with others became the Order of the Holy Cross which now has a monastery in West Park, New York. But that name is very familiar to us from Holy Cross Valley Cruces, similar monastic setting. And um, Huntington was the superior of the order for several non-consecutive terms. And I love that because it didn't matter to him who was in charge. And he didn't have to be in control of everything. So they voted someone else to be in control, fine. And he knew they'd come back to their senses and vote him in the next time. But um, he chiefly devoted himself to preaching and teaching and counseling until his death in 1935. And he actually died on June 28th, which normally would be the commemoration of any of our uh, folks. But that is the um, Feast of Irenaeus of Lyon, um, which is a big name. So they moved it to the date of um, Huntington taking his monastic vows in front of the Bishop of New York on November 25 in 1884. But in the course of his work, he became involved in the labor union movement and the land tax movement. And some of you may be aware of that. Suffice to say, because we're not going to get into the whole labor movement and land tax issues tonight, um, he became um, a disciple of Henry George the author of Progress and Property, and Poverty, I should say. And um, just if you want to look this up later, some of the other folks that are kind of followers of Henry George include Felix Morley, Aldous Huxley, Woodrow Wilson, Helen Keller, Winston Churchill, Leo Tolstoy, William F. Buckley Jr., and Sung Yat Sen. And apparently there are five Nobel Prizes authorized by Alfred Nobel specifically in economics. And um, a number of those folks have been disciples of Henry George and his take on property rights and um, the rights of workers. But the important thing to remember about James Otis Sargent Huntington was that he, his life was filled with adversity. Everything that could go wrong in his quest to establish an order, a monastic order, went wrong. Every barrier got pushed up in front of him time and time again. But he persevered because he knew he had a calling to ministry as a monastic, to bring other priests into that setting to help them nurture their spiritual life so that they would be more effective as spiritual leaders of congregations. And so Huntington really is an example for, to us of stick to of not throwing in the towel, of not giving up. And I find that timely for us as we're now slowly entering our 10th month of a pandemic where people are really kind of fed up with all the changes we've had to go through in life and having to do holidays now differently than we really want to. But maybe God is teaching us something in these moments to grasp something more powerful. That as we heard in the Psalm, that to, to taste and see that the Lord is good, that the Lord does take care of the righteous, that God's children will prosper 
in all things. So we give thanks for James Otis Sergeant Huntington. We wish he had a shorter name, but we appreciate his witness and his reminder to us that when God calls us, God calls us. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 120. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers on page 121. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, returning to page 113, we offer the following prayers together in unison, and note that a time for silent reflection will follow each prayer. And that begins on page 113. Together, blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of the changes of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Keep us from every sin, every evil, and every fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. And together, almighty everlasting God, let our prayer in your sight be as incense, the lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Give us grace to behold you present in your word and sacraments and to recognize you in the lives of those around us. Stir up in us the flame of that love which burned in the heart of your son as he bore his passion and let it burn in us to eternal life into the ages of ages. Amen. The Collect of the Day. Preserve your people, O God, from discouragement in the face of adversity, as you did your servant, James Huntington, knowing that when you have begun a good work, you will bring it to completion. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to unmute yourselves and offer prayers of intercession, thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. I brought my candle. It's our Thanksgiving candle. 
Holly Caps. Carol. Zero. Wendell. Dan. Ellen. Cindy. Jeff and Carol. Todd. Steve. Bob. Jeff. For Jensen and John Curtis. Yeah. Bill. Paul. For Margaret and the Comfort Center. For the Lees McRae students staying at the conference center over the holidays. Mm -hmm. Give thanks for the hospitality of the conference center. Yeah. For safe travel. We especially remember those who are alone at this holiday time. Remember how difficult it is. May they be surrounded by their love and our love. All these prayers of intercession and thanksgiving we lift up to you, O oh God asking that you would grant them as best is best for us and let us be your loving presence to all in this world. Hear this collect for justice. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land that barriers which divide us may crumble suspicions disappear and hatreds cease that our divisions being healed we may live in justice and peace through jesus christ our lord amen <clears throat> and now rather than the usual um, general thanksgiving prayer we're going to use the general thanksgiving found on page 836 now there's two thanksgivings there. The second one will be done tomorrow, but tonight we're doing the general thanksgiving on page 836, praying it together. And after the closing salutation and blessing, then we have another hymn. Page 836, together. Accept, O Lord our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life for his steadfast obedience, by which he overcame temptation, for his dying, through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.